Good day, everyone. Dr. Polaris here. The rolling open woodlands and semi-arid scrubland of late Oligocene California were home to many of North America's unique mishmash of animal groups. Conditions in the region had not changed much since the earlier stages of the period, with Oligocene faunal communities being rather homogenous across the continent. Tyrannosaurid tyrannosaurs, now endemic to North America, were the dominant apex predators. As with the late Cretaceous T-Rex, Tyrannosaurids possessed wide geographic and temporal ranges. The same genus can often be found at multiple fossil bearing sites across the continent. The genus Vastato Tyrannus was the perfect example of this trend. The remains of this 12 meter long carnivore span the entire Oligocene period and have been recovered from Oregon in the west to Florida in the east. Numerous species came and went, with some going on to produce the very last of North America's Tyrannosaurids during the Miocene. Smaller predators abounded and consisted of Boreoraptorine dromaeosaurs, Orchisoraptorid oviraptorosaurs, and Nyctolestid troodontans. There were also a number of more omnivorous theropods, with most of these being oviraptorosaurs. The Brontavids were the largest and most powerful of these, possessing massive heavy skulls and measuring up to 8 metres long. Their diets are extremely varied, consisting of pretty much anything that they could swallow and crush using their powerful beaks. This family was very long-lived. The oldest members of the group, Bidensaurus and Wasatchia, were found at Middle Eocene sites in Texas, while the youngest forms lived on until the Pliocene in Eurasia. In the late Oligocene, the genus Arctornis was extremely widespread across the northern continents. Its range encompassed the entirety of Eastern Asia and North America. The species found at the late Oligocene Tecuya Formation of California, Arctornis rapax, was one of the largest, measuring 7 metres long and weighing over 700 kilograms. Arctornis seems to have inhabited a niche similar to those of bears or entelodonts from our Earth, and their size and dietary flexibility lent them great success. The carnivorous Orchisoraptorids were also numerous, with two genera found at the Tecuya formation site. Swisheraptor blacky was the larger of the two, up to five metres long, and likely ambushed prey while also doing a decent amount of scavenging. The 3 meter Zipharynchus was a pursuit hunter of small ornithischians such as the Paleocornids and Presidioceratids. They would also have likely banded together to take out juvenile or injured Canelophine hadrosaurs and Novoceratopsians. Smaller oviraptorosaurs were also omnivorous generalists. The Cranosaurids were medium sized animals in the 2.5 to 5 meter range and were somewhat comparable to pigs from our Earth. Unlike pigs, however, cranosaurids tended to be brightly coloured and flamboyant animals built for speed. First appearing in the fossil record during the late Eocene of Southeast Asia, these adaptable dinosaurs soon spread across Laurasia and continue to thrive up to the present on Alter Earth. Another interesting family of small oviraptorosaurs were the Arctoraptorids. In modern times, these animals are large, widespread omnivores inhabiting most ecosystems on all continents except Australia and Antarctica. However, during the late Oligocene, they were confined to North America and were rather small. The genus Stertonosaurus was a rather typical early example of this group, being 2.5 metres long and inhabiting a generalist niche, much as Oviraptorids once did during the late Cretaceous. The Arctoraptorids would really come into their own during the Miocene. Dromaeosaurs in North America were solely represented by the Boreoraptorians and varied quite a bit in size. The largest were up to 7 metres in length and possessed sturdy builds and powerful, robust limbs suitable for grappling with medium sized ornithischians, while the smallest were more gracile 3 metre animals. All were ambush hunters lurking in the undergrowth ready to pounce on unsuspecting prey. Indeed, the open woodlands of the Oligocene provided the perfect conditions for these predators to thrive. The genus Typhoraptor californiensis was the sole representative of this family at Tecuya, and fell into the large, robust category, 
roughly comparable to Utah Raptor in terms of size. The fortunes of the Boreoraptorians would begin to falter during the Miocene. It appears that they lacked the necessary adaptations for fast running in a world increasingly dominated by open plains and cursorial prey. Also, for the first time, they would receive competition from two other predatory dinosaur groups, the derived speedy African Senodromiosaurs and the carnivorous Hippogryphoidians. Boreoraptorians would vanish from Asia and North America during the early and middle Miocene, respectively. However, they would hold on until the end of the period in the warm, humid forests of Europe. Living in their shadow were the beaked Rhynchorostron troodontans. Originating in the tropical forests of Eocene North America, these flexible animals began as small crepuscular omnivores, but, during the Oligocene, blossomed into a variety of novel forms. The first and most common of these lineages were the Nyctolestids, fast-running animals with predominantly omnivorous diets, but tending in some cases to lean more towards carnivory. Two of these animals were present at Tecuya, Corthoraptor chelonix and Demerosaurus occidentalis. The former was a 2.5 meter mesocarnivore with elongated hind limbs and likely hunted small mammals, lizards and snakes. The Nyctolestids generally possess corvid-like toothless beaks and, in modern times, inhabit most continents. However, during the Oligocene, they were confined to North America and would only spread to Eurasia and South America during the late Miocene and early Pliocene, respectively. Aside from these, a fairly different radiation of Rhynchoraptorans were also present, the Rhea Mimids. With the extinction of the Ornithomimosaurs during the Grand Coupre event, there were niches left open, and in North America the Rhea Mimids would fill these. First appearing during the early Oligocene, primitive forms were not very different from other basal Rhynchorostrans, being small, gracile omnivores. By the late Oligocene, however, Rhea mimids became larger and increasingly cursorial. The 4-meter Tecuyasaurus labratus was a representative of this evolutionary trend, possessing many anatomical features and characteristics of a cursorial mode of existence, and resembling an ornithomimosaur in outward appearance. Tecuyasaurus was not yet a specialised browser or grazer like its modern relatives, and fed on fruit, seeds, small animals, and C3 grasses. Modern rhea mimids are confined to the Americas, particularly the South American continent, which these animals reached during the Pliocene. The more basal Nothrosaurid troodontans were present in late Oligocene North America as well, although their remains have not yet been recovered from the Tecuya formation thus far. These slow-moving, heavy-set browsers were highly successful in the open, forested environments of Oligocene Laurasia. Indeed, these animals were one of the Cenozoic's longest-lasting dinosaur lineages, originating in the late Paleocene and only becoming extinct during the Pleistocene when the genus Mucronyx died out in India and Myanmar. Moving on to Ornithischians, Canalophine hadrosaurs and Novoceratopsians were the dominant large herbivores in the region. The former were endemic to North America, while the latter had spread to Eurasia during the Middle Oligocene. Canalophines are entering their golden age of diversity, which would last until the late Miocene, eight subgroups of which roamed the continent and varied wildly in terms of size and ecological niche. Some were enormous mixed browsers up to 15 metres long, while others were quite small, gracile animals of only 5 metres in length. Most possessed highly elaborate cranial crests and complex nasal cavities, indicating the presence of inflatable nasal balloons used to amplify their calls. Vast bone beds revealing the remains of dozens of individuals give the impression that these were herding animals, which would make sense given the Canalophines' numerous adaptations for social interaction. One genus has been uncovered at Tecuya, Agriohadros stocki. This 7 metre animal is known from a partial skeleton consisting of ribs, tail vertebrae, hind limb elements, intact forelimbs and a fragmentary skull. However, we can be confident in restoring the life appearance of this hadrosaur 
due to the fact that vast numbers of more complete remains have been uncovered across the western US. Agriohadros was a fairly slender, elegant browser capable of rapid turns of speed while running on its hind legs. Novoceratopsians, the descendants of the Leptoceratopsians, had now well and truly moved into the niches vacated by their deceased ceratopsid cousins, and, through convergent evolution, had re-evolved many of the same anatomical features, such as brow horns, neck frills, and massive skulls. These animals were remarkably common during the Oligocene and Miocene across the Northern Hemisphere. Browsing foliage in the warm open woodlands and savannas characteristic of this time, the limitations of their ceratopsian jaw structure meant that grazing was something of an impossibility and were thus limited to low browsing in the manner of black rhinos or tapirs. Five families of these animals roamed across the northern hemisphere, with only two of these surviving into modern times, the Carcharodonids and the Silviceratopsids. The genus found at Tekuya, Mesojugaloceratops fur longi, was a member of the former group, measuring 8 metres in length and weighing 6 tonnes. From a distance, this animal would have been impossible to differentiate from a ceratopsid, although the differences would become more apparent at close range. Novoceratopsian diversity began to wane during the late Miocene, with the ice ages of the Pleistocene effectively pushing the range of these animals southward towards the equator. In modern times, Novoceratopsians can still be found in Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, and South and Central America. The marginocephalian cousins of the Novoceratopsians, the Tragosauroids, continued to go from strength to strength in the role of small cursorial browsers and grazers. The tiny Paleocorlids darted about in the undergrowth, utilising their speed as their only defence against predators. Planicephaly chadronensis was a common find at Tekuya, with at least three specimens recovered so far, giving us a good overall impression of this 1.5 metre browser. As with all tragosauroids, and unlike the Cretaceous pachycephalosaurids, planicephaly and other paleocornids had flattened heads and a pair of short squamosal horns at the rear of the skull. Their forelimbs were tiny, almost useless, and atrophied, while their hind limbs were elongated, with reinforced tarsal bones suggesting a high degree of cursoriality. As regards the non-dinosaurian components of the Tekuya formation, there is not much in the way of fossil evidence to inform us. Fragmentary remains of lizards, snakes and pterosaurs have been recovered, although mu not much can be said for certain about them. Based on better preserved remains from other late Oligocene sites, we can be fairly certain of the presence of anguids, amphisbanians, boid snakes, iguanians, polyglyphanodontians, varanoids, taeids, and more. As darkoid pterosaurs stalked the open plains like giant storks or hornbills, while nyctosaurids and pteranodontids soared out on the Pacific coastline. Mammals are slightly better represented at Tekuya, with multituberculates being by far the most common. The semi-arboreal tilodontid genus Hesperectipoda sequens foraged for seeds and nuts on the ground and in the trees, while the fossorial grazing Boidiolabis lived like a marmot or oversized gopher. Aserictid alphodontian metatherians were the dominant insectivores, being diurnal and similar to dasurids in overall appearance. Stagodontids inhabited mustelid-like niches, and were the largest predatory mammals of the time, the most massive of which were wolverine-sized scavengers. Eutherians were also present as generalist omnivores, digging insectivores and heavily built rooters. Placental mammals were slowly expanding their range and ecological diversity, with most being nocturnal. One of the most successful groups of placental mammals in Oligocene North America were the Tylocerichoids members of Boreoeutheria, and containing hedgehog-like omnivores, mole and armadillo-like digging insectivores, and shrew-like small carnivores. This rise in diversity appears to coincide with a decline in the fortunes of the non-placental eutherian Gyxonyctopids and Paleorictids during the Oligocene. Why this trend occurred is uncertain, but it may have to do with the retraction of closed forest ecosystems 
after the end of the Eocene. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be back examining the fossil record and present day distribution of Afrotherian mammals. See you again soon. Cheerio.